Corticon makes it easy to create and update complex business rules that are deployed as web services. A scope defines the context or focus of a rule sheet vocabulary. Since scope narrows a set of results, it will be useful to create aliases for the scoped entities to make the rule easier to read and to enable other uses for the scoped entities. To illustrate scope and aliases, we'll use the sample vocabulary cargo, which deals with aircraft, flight plans, and cargo. We will modify the vocabulary to determine whether cargo loads exceed an aircraft's weight limit. When creating the scope, we want to identify the relevant subset of data. For example, if we included all aircraft and all cargo loads, we could determine whether any aircraft could carry any cargo load. That type of cross-product calculation of every plane-cargo combination might be useful for scheduling, but in this case, we have aircraft that have already been assigned a flight plan and a particular cargo. To create the most efficient scope, we want to evaluate whether each aircraft can carry the cargo assigned to it in its flight plan. The appropriate scope, therefore, includes the association of a flight plan to its assigned aircraft's capacity and the association of a flight plan to its assigned cargo. I have a rule sheet associated with our vocabulary. To define the scope, we'll drag the flight plan's cargo's weight to the first condition row. Add the less than or equal operator. And then we'll drag the flight plan's aircraft's maximum cargo weight to complete the condition. We want to test whether or not this condition is true. Is the assigned cargo less than or equal to the aircraft capacity? We enter T in column 1 and F in column 2. In the statement section, we indicate that the first line references column 1 and will be triggered only if the assigned cargo is appropriate for the aircraft. It is information only, and it refers to the flight plan aircraft. For the statement, we added appropriate values interspersed with text to make it simple and meaningful. Now we indicate that the second line references column 2. It is triggered if there is a violation, and it too refers to the flight plan aircraft. We make this statement just as meaningful, noting that the load exceeds the aircraft capacity. Although meaningful, this statement might be complicated for others to read. We will address that issue later with an alias. Let's take a look at our scope. We open the advanced view. Let's expand the entities and associations. They have the attributes we used in the conditions. The scope also has attributes that we used only in the statements. Note that we added the qualified flight plan dot aircraft dot tail number instead of the broader aircraft dot tail number which would have drawn all the aircraft into the evaluations. So too with the manifest number. Now let's add some aliases for our scoped results to make the rule sheet and statements easier to read. In the scope, we double click on flight plan and enter scheduled as an alias because we are only including aircraft scheduled with a flight plan. Notice that the statements and conditions change to use that alias. We double click on aircraft and enter equipment. This alternate name refers to just the scoped list of aircraft that are assigned in flight plans. We double click on cargo and enter load. Our aliases all work as expected. The statements are easier to read for the designer, and these aliases are required when we add collections, filters, and database retrievals to this rule sheet. Let's test the rules to see how they evaluate. 
I previously prepared a rule test that includes a few tests. The rule test includes all of the entities, associations, and attributes that we used in the scope of the rule sheet. I copied it a few times and entered values. When we run the test, our simple rule worked as expected. We have clear natural language statements for each test instance's result. The scope and aliases on the rule sheet defined our rule properly. This concludes our look at scope and aliases.